be doing something a little bit different today. I'm going to be doing a tutorial video on how to make a ZZT level. And the two programs I'm going to use is something called KevEdit. And then the next program I'm going to use is something called Lion, which I already introduced to you in the other videos when I was doing um, actual reviews. I don't normally do anything like this, but I figured the game is so old that many people probably don't even remember how to program for it. So let's hope this works. Okay, as you can see right here, we're at the main KevEdit screen. You start off blank page and everything. And you start off in the title screen, just to make sure, because there's a couple editors where it might start over the first page or whatnot, like the original. First off, we're going to hit F4. That enters text, as you can see on the, on the right side of the screen. So we're going to enter Test World. We're going to hit F4 again to release that. Now, to switch to make more boards, we're going to hit B, and we're going to go to Add New Board. Very simple. Enter title, test board. I it's spelled right. <laughs> All right, so first things first, we need to set where the player is going to be. So I usually end up picking the lower bottom. I don't know why, it's just my way. But you can select anywhere. It doesn't matter. So we're going to hit F1 to, sh to uh, place an item. And then we're going to hit Z for player. Bam. Now our smiley guy is on the screen. So we want to give him boundaries so let's do this I press P for pattern I move to the line pattern right there on the bottom and then I'm going to go to the dark gray um, you can select any color you want it doesn't really matter it's your world it's what you make of it I sound like Bob Ross okay so let's just make a silly little boundary right now of course it popped up there we go um, to select a blank spot you just hit P again because that's a blank area. And now I'm going to hit tab once. See how it highlights withdraw? Bam, I got my square world. This is the player's universe. Now, this universe is kind of boring, so we're going to we're gonna try to liven it up a bit. All right, so let's select that cyan color. And we're going to select F3 to select terrains. We're going to hit A for fake. Boom, that's going to place the fake texture like that. Now, this editor is kind of finicky. There's different buttons you can hit. Um, I believe X used to be fill on the original editor. On this one, you're going to hit F. It's very imperative. If you hit X, it just screws it up. Boom. Um, so that's going to give us just a just a little fill right there. Um, you can use gradients if you want. That's using solids, normals, breakables, fakes, and vice versa. And that'll give you a better effect, give, give you better quote unquote graphics. Okay, so let's go to F3 again, terrain, A for fake, place that one, hit F, boom. Remove the player, fill in the block. Let's move him down here, like I said, I like him, move down. So now we can create subrooms in here too. We're gonna go to, back to the line blocks. Just creating some very basic rooms. Nothing fancy. Nothing. Nothing to write home about. Uh, let's create like a main hallway too. Right about there. Okay. Doors don't have to match up. Doesn't matter. Let's create another room right about here. Okay, and let's create a little closet area. Bam. So, this is going to be, uh, could be someone's house, could be uh, a story with, with, uh, driven objects where the player's at the bottom of the screen and he just watches. You can do a multitude of different things with different setups and different worlds. So this is going to be our basic, basic test world right now. So we're going to hit S for save and we're just going to back out on title and just type in test world. Written. Okay. So now when you get here, 
what you want to do is you want to place an object so the player can interact with it. First things first though, a lot of players did this back in the day. They created a scroll. Now a scroll is just going to give you basic information. It's going to tell you, hey, welcome to my world, yada, yada, yada. If you need help, this is what you can do for help. Um, it might have the version number, it might have the, the game, it might just be thank you for playing. It could be could be anything basic too. So we're gonna hit F1, go to S for scroll, boom, very simple. We're gonna hit enter once, and this is gonna give you the uh, advanced tweaking menu that um, Kevin gives you, and you should use it at your own risk. I don't really do this. I'm not pro at that. Don't bother doing that. So you're gonna hit enter one more time. Boom, program editor. Now you really can't put in a lot of programming commands in a scroll. It could screw up, it could halt your game, it could crash it. So I always keep it very basic. So we're going to say, first things first, test world. Thank you for playing my test world. Walk around and touch things. Okay, so we're not going to put any code in that. It's just a basic scroll. Just let it go. Let it go. There we go. Okay. And for some reason, I'm feeling really OCD right now. So I'm just going to fix this and make it kind of match up with that. <laughs> okay. Let's match that side too. Beautiful. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create an object. Now an object is going to be is the is the real meat and potatoes of ZZT. Okay. So we're going to create a little object on the side up here. And what this is going to do is this object it's going to be a box okay so unfortunately I don't explain these things very well right here character that's where you're going to actually define what your character looks like what your object look like looks like so you can pick anywhere from this ASCII set right here that's it you can't pick anything else um, you can modify um, some of the graphics, I believe, but uh, we're not going to get into that in these videos. All right, so you're going to go to Program Now. You're going to go to Edit, and the default cycle, that's the speed the object runs on, is always three. You can set it to one, which is the fastest, or 255, which is the slowest. Okay, so now we're into the programming basics. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to define your object. So you're going to use Shift Two which is the at symbol, and this is going to be the name of your object. So we're going to just call it box. And now we don't want it to run anything right off the start, so I always put end, just my way. So that way it's not running any other code. That's what you have to do. So now we're going to do the command. Um, and forgive me if I, I'm not calling these the right things, but we're going to do a colon and we're going to do touch. This is saying, okay, when the player touches the object, it's going to execute this code. Okay, so now when they touch the box, it's going to say, you see a box in front of you. Um, we can describe it more, we can describe it in such crazy detail, it's not even funny. But in this case, a box is just a simple box. Okay. Do you want to open the box? So now we're going to give the player a choice whether or not they want to open this box or not. Now for making choices, it's a very simple system to use. You do a shift one exclamation point and you do yes and then a colon, sorry, semicolon. And you would say yes. So the player is going to see the last part of that, that yes. Another line. Um, exclamation point, no, and then we're going to 
to semicolon and another no with a period. You don't have to put a period. It's up to you. Whatever you want to do. Okay. Then we're going to do an end command again, too. That just tells us that's you. you're going to end on that code right there until the player makes a choice of either the yes or the no. So every time the player touches it and doesn't make a choice, you just come up with that. Okay. So then we're going to do a colon. Yes. You open the box and discover a torch. So torches in ZZT are um, something to use when the screen is dark. So that way it brightens up the graphics on the player. And I believe it's like a five or six block radius all around so the player can see. So it's basically just, it's dark mode. So you're going to use those for, for um, total darkness and boys. So what we're going to want to do is, since we don't want to set that up like that, we're going to put give torches one. So that's going to give the player a torch, and that's all it's going to do. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, so every time in the box I'm going to get a torch. No. Become fake. So when the player, and I was putting that statement just to close everything out. So when the player touches that, it's going to give him a torch. It's going to say, you open the box and discover a torch. And it's going to give you a torch and just fake out. Become fake is means basically fade from existence. Um, die commands usually work too, but I believe, and I could be wrong about this, but I believe become fake became popular because it doesn't destroy the said ground area. And um, I believe that depends on what color the ground area is too. It's very weird, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the choice on it. Again, it's been used, so I don't remember all these little facts. I'm going to select no. So this is going to be if the player selected no for some reason. Okay. You don't have to open it if you don't want to. End. So that's going to come up with a little dialog box, and it's going to say, okay, you don't have to open it if you don't want to. Simple as that. No, no other choices to make. No other statements in that one. The first one with, with a yes, it's only going to appear at the bottom of the page this line right here because it's a single line so if we want it to appear as a scroll box it has to have at least two lines so we're gonna have to do this connect and enter boom now that'll appear as a dialog pop-up box okay so now this is basically done this box is done if you want to add more you can if you want to give take whatever you can do that too but it's just not necessary really it's just a simple test phase set up for that. Okay, now let's add some more things before we run said world. Um, let's add a man. Purple man. We'll add him for the purple room right here too. Alright, let's face him out. Flush him out a little bit. Man. And Okay. And we can make him do some simple commands. Now, there's north, west, east, south in this game. Um, so if we want the man to move north or west, we would basically just type in slash n slash w, northwest. Now, if you do a slash command, that's going to be you have to move this way. If you don't move that way, your program will halt. So we're going to use the try, try to move. So that's going to be the question mark in question mark west question mark east question mark south so this guy's just gonna move in kind of you know silly patterns like that and it's gonna restart each time and then when we're gonna break the cycle when we touch him why did you touch me And then it's going to restart. And then I always put end just to just to end the sections. You don't have to do that. It's just what the way I do it. Okay. And we could come up with a whole dialog box here too of um, because I wanted to blah blah blah. You know this and that. Um, you can also change the text to white by doing a dollar sign like that because I felt. 
You know? Because I felt like it. Alright, so now we're gonna let him exist in our world. And let's let me show you some other things you can do too. Um you can put items in the in the world too. Um for instance, let's put a key. So let's let's actually make a purple key. So because my color is already set on purple key, all I have to do is hit F1 and hit K for key. You can only open a purple door with a purple key. Very basic, very simple stuff. So now we're going to go to the doorway path on this one. And we're just going to do F1, D for door. Boom. Very simple. Nothing too complicated. Let's save our world just in case. Okay, so um, that's some of the basics right there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out. We're going to run it. And we're going to see how it performs. So let's do this right now. Let's quit this. Test world. I'm going to drag it. And as you see right there, test world. We're going to go P for play. Press up. Now it's going to warn you fake wall secret passage every single time. Now, if you have ZZT 3.2 and under, that's what it's going to do. There's an un. I think a, there's a hack copy by Will called ZZT 4.0 that actually suppresses those messages. You can suppress them in line too. I don't usually do that, but you could. So let's check this out. Now we're going to hit the the scroll, and it's going to play that every time, of course. Test world. Thank you for playing my test world. Walk around and touch things. All right. And you can always mute the sound if you don't like that. Okay, and you'll see the um, man object. He's just, well, he's ramming his head in the wall, as we do all do sometimes. Open the door, and let's go to him first. Oop, there we go. Why did you touch me? Because I felt like it. <laughs> and then he's just gonna keep ramming his head in the wall. You see a box in front of me? You don't want to open the box? No. Okay, you don't have to open it if you don't want to. See a box in front of you? You want to open it? Yes. You open the box and discover a torch. Box disappears, become fake, you see the ground, it's intact, and you have a torch for what you can use later and when we make a cave or whatnot. So that's uh, some of the basics right there. I believe what I'll do next is I'll try to establish more of the code that you can do with objects because you can do some fancy stuff. So uh, we'll do that in the part two series.